chapter four. It belongs in a museum. Edith hunched low over the handlebars and tore through the traffic. The bodyguards followed. Every time Mr Penguin opened his eyes, they seemed to be getting closer. Behind him, Colin was dancing about like a boxer in the ring, air punching and waving his pad. It said, put him up, put him up. Edith swung the bike around a sharp corner and onto another busy road. But the grumpy-faced villains followed and soon drew level. There they are. They do look quite grumpy, don't they? Where's our rock? One of them yelled gruffly from the back of the other man's bike. It belongs to us. Mr Penguin snatched up his satchel with one flipper and held it close to his chest. No, it doesn't, he shouted. It belongs in a museum. The brute growled, shot out a big thick hand and grabbed Mr Penguin's satchel. Mr Penguin snatched the strap and for the next few moments there was a tug of war between the two racing motorbikes with Mr Penguin's satchel stuck in the middle. Eventually one of its seams started to rip. Colin! Mr Penguin cried, his heart thumping like a big bass drum. Do something! Colin leapt into action. He jumped from the back of the motorbike onto the bodyguard's shoulder and biffed him on the nose. Kapow! Before driving, diving back and landing perfectly on Mr Penguin's shoulder. The bodyguard let go of the satchel and Mr Penguin pulled it close to his chest again. Hooray! he jeered. Where to now, Edith? Edith furrowed her brow and slithered through the roaring traffic like a snake. But the two beastly bodyguards weren't far behind. To the airbase, Edith cried, revving the engine up to full throttle. She slammed her foot onto the pedal and skillfully swerved the motorbike down the side street. She suddenly hunched low again and yelled, Duck! Oh, where? Mr Penguin asked, looking around brightly. He loved feeding the ducks in the park near his home in Cityville. No, Edith cried, Duck! And she flattened herself as low as she could go. Colin pounced on Mr Penguin's head to push it down as Edith drove the motorbike right between the wheels of an enormous rubbish lorry. The gigantic vehicle roared over their heads. Behind, the bodyguards tried to follow, but they were far too big. As Mr Penguin and his gang of adventurers escaped into the night, the two brutes crashed headfirst into the lorry. They flew off their bike and landed with a disgusting squelch in the back, covered from head to toe in foul-smelling rubbish. A large black car swerved into the side road on two wheels and slammed on the brakes with a dreadful screech, sending a great cloud of dust and exhaust fumes billowing into the air. As the smoke cleared, the glamorous lady from the roof terrace tore off her sunglasses and slapped her beautifully manicured hand against the steering wheel. She was livid. That means very, very poor. On her chest, the strange brooch glinted in the glow of a nearby street lamp. And there's the brooch. It's one last page of this chapter. It looks a bit like a letter. My name is Dr. Mesmero, and I am a hypnotist. Actually, I am absolutely and without any doubt, the best hypnotist in the world. I'm using this book to keep track of all the little pieces of my dastardly plan. It also means when I have succeeded, I can flick back through this grubby notepad and marvel at just how clever I have been. The ancient art of hypnotism has been in my family for generations. My father was a hypnotist and his father and all the fathers before them. However, my skills surprise everyone. I was only a few days old when I managed to hypnotise a nurse in the hospital. Apparently, I got the nurse to remove all the other babies from the ward so I didn't have to put up with their dreadful crying and stinky nappy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there for today. Chapter five is called A Mid-Air Fish Finger Sandwich. And those of you who've read these books before with me know Mr Penguin loves a fish finger sandwich. 
I'll be back soon with this chapter and some others. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye.